All right, let's give this a whirl. Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. 007, reporting for duty. Why didn't you call? You didn't get the postcard? You should try it sometime. Get away from it all. It really lends perspective. Ran out of drink where you were, did they? What was it you said? Take the bloody shot. I made a judgment call. You should have trusted me to finish the job. It was the possibility of losing you or the certainty of losing all those other agents. I made the only decision I could, and you know it. I think you lost your nerve. What do you expect? A bloody apology? You know the rules of the game. You've been playing it long enough. We both have. Maybe too long. Speak for yourself. So this is it. We both played out. If you believe that, why did you come back? Good question. Because we're under attack. And you know we need you. Well, I'm here. You'll have to be debriefed and declared fit for active service. You can only return to duty when you've passed the tests. So take them seriously. The shower might be in order. I'll go home and change. Well, we've sold your flat. Put your things into storage. Standard procedure on the death of an unmarried employee with no next of kin. You should have called. I'll find a hotel. Well, you're bloody well not sleeping here. What are you? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. The... Bond. Bond. Spawn. Bond. Spawn. Spawn. James, James Bond. Bond. My name is Oliver Queen. I am someone else. I am something else. I am the Green Arrow. This is the Night Cave. The show covering everything related to Batman, James Bond, and Arrow. And now, here's your host, Brian Thomas. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an all-new episode of The Night Cave. That's right, not the Batman vs. James Bond show. This is The Night Cave. We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, the name's Thomas, Brian Thomas. Yes, I'm still here, and yes, I am your host, and thank you, thank you for joining me. And if you are a long-time listener, then uh, yeah, this has been a long time coming. Um, like I said, I'll get to it in a minute. Anyway, this is the show, for those of you just joining us for the first time, where we discuss everything related to Batman, James Bond, Arrow, and maybe Knight Rider. We're, we'll talk about that also. So, all right, in the words of the Joker, where do we begin? Um, Yeah, so there was a thing called a hiatus, and t for the life of me, I can't actually say when this hiatus began. I think it started probably at the beginning, um, probably of last year, 2018, and um, lots of things happened in the last year, um, many good things. Um, like I said, you know, like James Bond, I will return like Batman, you know, I will, you know, I will return. You see what I did there. Um, let me just say, it's great to be back. I've been wanting to do this for quite a long time and I've tried, well, how do I say this? I did try a different format in a sense where I did try on YouTube trying to do video and you know what, it, it, for the all of you out there, you know, for all the broadcasters and podcasters and bloggers out there that do YouTube, Kudos to you because one something that I've never been good with is being on camera recording myself, and it's something about the comfort of a microphone and just be talking. Because if there's anything I do, you know, to pat myself on the back, it, it's talking to myself, and that's something I've always done for quite a long time. And that's what I what's what makes this show so great for me. Anyway, is because it, whatever I have a random thought, hey. I could just put on and record, I can put a microphone in front of me, and then I could talk Batman, James Bond, now Arrow, and possibly Knight Rider. Yeah, um, so why the name change? Okay, well, the Batman versus James Bond show, in theory, you know, it was, I, I like the name. And when the name kind of came to mind, I'm like, all right, what do I call, call a show about Batman and James Bond? Because they are sort of two different worlds, they're, but they're kind of similar at the same time. And this was also at the same time when Batman v Superman Dawn of whatever was coming out. And it was actually kind of, I was like, you know what? 
I'm going to go with this, and you know what? I, I kind of stuck with it for however long time it was. People still know the show as Batman versus James Bond show, and that's great. It means that, you know, um, th- obviously you guys liked it, and um, I know that people are still talking about it to this day. And, um, you know, I'm glad that I still have a few followers out there. For those of you that have been waiting and waiting, yes, I'm back. Um, we are here to get this thing done Um just a few things I did want to mention, though. No, I'm not going to do any plugs, but I will say that part of the thing about me being on hiatus was, one, I became a daddy. That's right. I am now a dad. That's right. Papa Bats, um, you know, James Bond, I don't think actually had a kid, maybe in the books for um, the James Bond enthusiast out there. But, yes, I have a daughter. Her name is Adriana. She is eight months old. Um you know, it's just uh, for all the parents out there. Let me just tell you that um, you know exactly what I've gone through for, throughout the last eight months. Um, luckily, my wife has been the one that has been um, the one that's really been taking care and showing me how to be a parent. And because it came so natural to her, and um, you know, here I am while she's taking care of the baby, and I'm locked off in the, in my office, which I actually do call the night cave. I think it was kind of that's another way the the name kind of came together. I was like, okay, Batman goes by the Dark Knight. That's another alias of his. James Bond, you sir, he can be kind of like a night surgeon, but man, maybe it kind of works if you're Sir Sean Connery, Sir Roger Moore. I don't know, maybe that works. But anyway, I like the night cave a lot better. But where I was going with this is, yes, I I call my office the night cave, so I'm like, well, let's try calling the show that, and that gives me the opportunity to add maybe a few more things that I wanted to talk about, but I couldn't fit under the Batman versus James Bond show label. So, yes, I will be – I'm definitely going to be adding Arrow um, to the topics. Um, I won't be talking about it so much on this episode. I'm still back and forth on Knight Rider um, because I am a diehard – I was a Knight Rider fan before James Bond and Batman. I Actually, Bat, it came – I think it would say probably around Batman 1989 and Knight Rider. And Knight Rider had ended right before that. But at the same time, I still have my original Knight Rider car right in front of me, my, my original toy. And, um, yeah, I, I, so I think I'm really leaning towards the idea of talking Knight Rider. There might be a podcast out there and that already talks about Knight Rider. And, you know, I hopefully, if you are a fan of James Bond and you are a fan of Batman, then you are definitely, you must be a fan of Knight Rider, or maybe you would like to hear me talk about Knight Rider. We can add some more flavor to the show. So, um, you know, let me know what you have to think about that. Anyway, um... So what has happened since the last time that we talked? It feels like it's been so long. But the good news is, and for me anyway, and the bad news at the same time is that there hasn't been a new Batman movie. Okay, the last Batman movie we had was Justice League. And I look back in the archives, and I know I did a Justice League review, so I know that I made it that far. Now, there has also not been a James Bond movie. But there is news to talk about with Bond 25 finally because filming has begun. So you know what? Let's kick it off with that. Um, Same idea, same format, kind of as we did before. Um, We'll start with news, kind of some updates, kind of give my opinions on that. And uh, we'll talk about some anniversaries. Maybe we'll do birthdays eventually. I'll get back to that. And then I still – I have some – Listener questions I've been meaning to get to for almost a year now, so I think it's about time that I actually get to it. So let's talk about Bond 25. What do we know so far? Okay, Bond 25 will be released next year. Um, It's actually going to be released um, in—actually, I'm sorry. Shooting began uh, on this past April 28th. Now, I don't have the actual date in front of me of when— Bond 25 is going to be coming to theaters, but I can tell you that we, after so many different directors, we know Daniel Craig is coming back. He announced that even when I la- right before I went on hiatus that he was definitely coming back. This would probably be his last Bond film. Um, it was in talks maybe at the time about trying to find a director or what's going to be going on. Are they bringing back um, all of the MI6 crew? Are they going to be bringing back Sam Mendes? Well, we know that Sam Mendes isn't coming back. We know now that Danny Boyle is not directing it because that didn't work out so well. And now it's Kerry Fukunawa. I can never pronounce his name correctly, but he will be – he is the new director of Bond 25. They've already made the announcement, um, and they actually have official plot synopsis that reads like this. Bond has left active service and is enjoying a tranquil life in Jamaica. His peace is short-lived when his old friend Felix Slater from the CIA turns up asking for help. The mission – 
turns out to be far more treacherous than expected, leading Bond onto a trail of mysterious villain armed and with dangerous new technology. Um, Ralph Fiennes is coming back as M. Naomi Harris is coming back as Eve Money Penny. Ben Whishaw is coming back as Q. For the Bond fans that are have been a big fan of the Felix Slater character, especially uh, especially Jeffrey Wright, excuse me, um, he will be coming back as Felix Slater. We haven't seen him since Quantum of Solace. He was mentioned in Spectre, so really excited to see that. Leah Sadu is coming back. I'm biting my tongue on that because she's my least favorite of the Daniel Craig era Bond girls. Um, you know, I'll, I'll share my thoughts about that another time. We know that Rami Malek... Um, he was recently cast as the main villain. Um, he was in, oh, what's it called? Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody, the, the Queen documentary kind of movie, or biography movie. Um, we also know that um, his character is described as a mysterious villain armed with dangerous new technology, kind of like I said. Uh, so what else do we know right now? That the um, new Helmer is um, Kerry F- Fukunaga. Sorry. And um, he's best known for directing every episode of the first season of HBO's crime drama True Detective. I never had a chance to watch it. As a matter of fact, I think I still have it on um, DVD or Blu-ray down in my basement. It's just one of those things that I keep forgetting to get to. Maybe I need to go check it out because that way I can get maybe a, a taste of what this um, – what his you know ideas or what he will be bringing to the table for Bond 25. Um, he also directed a movie called Beast of No Nation and created Jonah Hill and Emma Stone's darkly comic Netflix, Maniac. Um, we also know that the uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, the creator and star of Fleabag, has been brought in to punch up the screenplay for Bond 25. Um, I think the last time we had talked about this is that we knew that um, Neil Purvis and Robert Wade were going to be – they've been writing Bond movies all the way back since 1999 of The World Is Not Enough. And yeah, even – Die Another Day, you know, those of you that didn't like Quantum Solace, Spectre, all of those, all of those in between, they're back. And that's either – that. to me, I, I like that because – in a sense because – all right, well, they're so familiar with the Craig era that, you know what, that they'll tie things in. But at the same time, I'm like, well, they t- tried tying things in with Spectre, and I didn't like how they tied everything back in. So I like knowing that they're having some fresh, some a new writer kind of join in and pi, try to punch it up, as they say. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you know, Barbara Broccoli, uh, the produ- longtime producer, daughter of Cubby Broccoli, um, suggested that in wake of the Me Too movement, James Bond's treatment of women will change in Bond 25. She explained that the Me Too movement had a huge impact, rightfully, thankfully, on society, and these films should reflect that as everything we do. So hence probably why they brought in the, um, this uh, – brought in uh, Waller-Bridge as like somebody to punch up the script and maybe um, – to write a stronger dialogue, um, maybe just, you know, instead of being the womanizing, you know, James Bond that we've seen in the past, um, I, I always come back to Goldeneye because, one, it's one of my favorite James Bond movies. Um, you know, he what did M call him? A sexist, monocistic dinosaur, a relic of Cold War. And that's exactly what Bond is. In Even in the Craig era, we could say that, you know, even though he wasn't like it's James Bond, you know, a, a new interpretation of James Bond, he's still that sexist guy. He still he was still using women. He especially went back into it um, in Casino Royale and um, Skyfall. He was definitely using women. If you want to, you know, I'm I'm doing quotation marks. I forgot I'm not on video camera right now. But the um, the bottom line is, guys, that yeah, this movie is definitely happening. The filming officially began in April 28th. Um, they're going to be filming in London, Norway, Italy, and Jamaica. Now, they did just release some footage that I just watched um, a couple days ago, and I just watched right before I started recording, um, of some of the behind-the-scenes footage of Bond um, 25 from their filming in Jamaica. And I got to say, it looks great. I didn't like the song that they used into it, and like I told the Bond group um, that I'm, I'm involved with it on Instagram, you guys know who you are, love you guys, um, Universal Exports, Iconic Alternatives, um, BAM Style, you know, all those guys. You know, I, I love you guys. Anyway, we we always talk about Bond clothing and such. And we also talk about our thoughts on James Bond and they, you know, occasionally some Batman. Anyway, though, th- 
I told them, I was like, you know what, guys? I think that, that what was missing for this for me is that the music kind of felt off. I know it's like an on-scene location. I almost wish that, like, you know how they did in for, – for all the Bond fans out there, you know what I'm talking about when they use past past cues from scores of other movies. If they would have used a score from Quantum of Solace, I think that would have been way more fitting than the song that they used for this. It, sounded, it was some kind of Jamaican – or not Jamaican. It, it was some kind of hip-hop kind of uh, – Oh, R&B song? I don't know. It's not, I, it's, I like the song. I just don't think that it fit for behind-the-scenes footage. At the same time, this isn't a trailer. These are just some behind-the-scenes things, some clips. We're seeing James Bond, you know, kind of in his button-down black uh, shirt, and he's got his probably his Tom Fords on and such. And he's a retired – you can tell that he's kind of, like, easygoing and such, but he's driving around in his Land Rover and – um. You see Felix Slater in there. It looks like it was a club scene from what I could tell. And he's trying, I guess he's, you know, Felix came to him and saying, hey, I need you. I need you badly. Come on, 007, get back in action. Um, but other than that, though, there isn't much known with that. Um, I can tell you that Ana de Armas, um, she's going to be also the new Bond girl in there. Do we know what's going to happen with Leah Sidhu? Um, Besides the fact that I think she was one of the most boring Daniel Craig, James Bond girls um, I'm sorry. That's that's my feeling. Um, and you know, always as always, you know, let me know what you think. If you have a good argument for it, please let me know. I'm willing to hear it. But that's just my opinion. That you know, I just think that she was kind of. Uh, they tried to make her like a Vesper Lynn, and she just it, it was she, the chemistry. I think that's what always gets me. The chemistry that she had with Daniel Craig, it just it was forced, and it just didn't work out so well. So. Um, yeah, there's that. So, you know, am I looking forward to Bond 25? If you would have said at the beginning of the year, Brian, what do you think about Bond 25? I would say, eh, I'm ready for Craig to be done with this. But now that I've seen the images, now that I'm seeing some footage and such, now that I have an idea that the fact that this thing is actually happening, that they're bringing back the Aston Martin DB5, they're bringing back the Living Daylights Aston Martin and a new futuristic kind of concept Aston Martin, I'm like, all right, I'm getting on board with this. I'm I'm starting to get Bond fever. Not quite yet. Maybe when I see that first teaser trailer, once they put some more footage together. Now, something that I also want to make sure that I don't forget to note is that Daniel Craig was injured. He injured his – oh, man. Was, did he injure his foot or his ankle? I, see, I should have prepared more for this, but this was kind of spur of the moment. Anyway, um, yeah, he ha he is back into uh, filming, and he even did um, – he met with the – oh, what's his name? The uh, the prince, prince – not Prince Harry. Um, you guys are going to kill me. Anyway, he met um, – when, when the princes um, met with, of London <laughs> met with him – and um, you know they were all, they were kind of on the set, and he was kind of you know showing off you know the, all the Aston Martins, and he was meeting with the cast and crew. It was really cool to see that. And I guess the thing with Eon Productions, um, Everything or Nothing Productions, that you know owns James Bond and such, um, they're never big for like I would say doing regular plebis publicity. Um, they always kind of keep it you know in house in a sense. So the idea that you know they're just slowly releasing this footage they're kind of, they didn't do like a big you know introduction when they were like doing their announcement of bond 25 with the cast and crew and such it was just kind of like their own kind of thing and unless you're a bond fan you probably didn't really know too much about it so um in terms of marketing i think they need to up their game with this i mean i would you know it's james bond come on guys it's not that hard to market a james bond movie so you know i think Whatever they decide to do, they really need to, like, get people – you know, it's been since 2015, and, you know, for those of you that love Spectre, for those of you that hate Spectre, bottom line is we haven't had a Bond film in over – or almost four years now, and we won't get one until 2020. And to me, I think that, you know, James Bond – you know, everybody knows – the, the name James Bond, you know my name, of course, and I'm not going to sing the song, but you, it's just it, – it's kind of iconic, kind of like Batman, and but nevertheless, though, they need they need to get his name out there. They need to get him – I don't know, not interview so much, but they need to get like this footage going viral or something. Come on, we're in the 21st century. The, it, if it goes on YouTube, you know, they can really do some – something with this so anyway let me know what you have to think about bond 25 about what you've seen so far um i'm excited i'm not like super super excited because at the same time i'm like i'm ready for the next james bond daniel craig has been james bond longer than roger moore if you can believe that um not as many james bond movies but 
nevertheless, though, um, yeah, this is Daniel Craig is your James Bond still. So, but let's shift gears here into Batman. Something happened while I was away, and maybe while you were away too. Ben Affleck is out as Batman. Yes. Um. Bye. Bye, Bats. Um. Bye, Batflick. Um. No, I, I I actually liked Batflick, and you know, for all the the hate that Batman v Superman got, and even the hate Dawn, of, I'm sorry, Justice League got, you know, I liked them for what they were. I like Batman v Superman better, but I think that it it was full of not so much plot holes. It was just too long, too dark, and just there were, there were so many things going on. It could have been separated into two different movies, maybe even three. Bottom line is Ben Affleck is no longer Batman. Recently, it was announced that Twilight, I'm sorry, Robert Pattinson has officially been cast as Batman. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, let's go back a little ways with this because, like I said, we have some catching up to do. Um, as of right now, we know that Warner Brothers has targeted a release date of June 25th, 2021. So, like I said, while I was away, I guess I didn't miss too much. Um, there's no official announcement yet on when production will start. Um, it could start at the end of this year. It could start next year for all we know. Um, it was originally, you know, revealed, revealed if you going back here, remember hearing like after Batman v Superman and even when Justice League that right before Justice League came out, it's, oh, Ben Affleck is going to be writing, directing and producing and starring as Batman. Then it ended up being, oh, well, he's not directing. He's still going to write. He's still going to produce and be Batman. And then all of a sudden, he's not going to be writing it. He's not going to be producing it. He's not doing any of that. And it was always a question is, is he still going to be Batman? And I remember that Comic-Con, I guess it was right before Justice League came out in 2018. Was it? No, I'm sorry. 2017, excuse me. And just that you could see that things were a little different. And, like, there were reports coming out, whether it was the Hollywood Reporter or Variety. And it was just to the point where, okay, is he's still Batman because why are they like, you know, they, he apparently had such a great idea for a script and then something's going on. And then Ben Affleck, you know, had some alcohol problems and such. And not that that really has anything to do with him playing the part of Batman, but maybe it did. Maybe it's just that, you know, his personal life, he wasn't able to get so much done with this movie. So anyway, had to close the door. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so Ben Affleck is definitely out. There was also talk about, you know, um, then uh, Matt Reeves was brought in, the director of Planet of the Apes, or was it Rise of the Planet of the Apes? Um, I don't know, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? I, I forget all those. Anyway, uh, so, you know, it was mentioned that, you know, Matt Reeves is going to be directing this, and then it was – the question. The big question is, okay, so – Ben Affleck still going to be Batman, and no one really knew what was going to happen with that. So, you know, it was all just kind of guessing. It's like, okay, let's spin a wheel to see is Ben Affleck going to be Batman or not. So, you know, as it turns out, a couple years down the road, guess what? Ben Affleck is not Batman, and Robert Pattinson is. There was it, the biggest question I've had more recently is, what do I think about Robert Pattinson? Well. I've seen Twilight, and that's about all I've seen of him. So I can't go in judging him based on that. At least I feel like I shouldn't be able to. I shouldn't be judging him on that. And the same can be said about Heath Ledger, Michael Keaton, and whoever the other actors and actresses out there that have been cast in a Batman role or for any iconic, you know, role, if you will. So going back to Michael Keaton, and by the way, happy anniversary, Batman eighty nine. Oh yeah, um, that one's for you. Uh, take two podcast uh and thanks for filling in uh you know batman 89 turns 30 years old actually it turned 30 years old this week yes i am due up for a review episode of that it's in the works i i, I will find a way to make that happen anyway i remember hearing about all the reaction the negative reaction and the outrages they like to say about michael keaton being cast as batman he doesn't look like an action star it should have been stallone it should have been Schwarzenegger, whomever else. And well, we see what happens when Schwarzenegger was cast in a Batman movie. Um, it, nevertheless, though, you see, like, Heath Ledger. And I wasn't excited about Heath Ledger when he was when I heard. I was like, Heath Ledger, the guy from A Knight's Tale, uh, Brokeback Mountain, and other independent movies I've never watched or really didn't have any interest in? All right, well, and then you see the trailer, you see him in the makeup, and you know what? They make a believer out of you. So... I am being optimistic about Robert Pattinson as Batman, and I got to tell you that, you know, there's probably some, there's, 
I hope I I really want I want this to be good. Okay, I I do not want this movie to do bad, but you know, I I have faith. I, I'd like to say that I have faith in Warner Brothers and you know the the movies, and I think. With all the movies, the DC movies that have happened in the last year or so, let's see, we've had Aquaman, Shazam, none of them which I've gone to see because I am not really didn't have any interest in them so much. Um, I'd say the last Batman movie we really had, good Batman movie we had, was Lego Batman, if you really want to count, count that, as, even though it was animated. Um, you know, I, I it feels like a while since we've had the, the, a good Batman movie. I guess Dark Knight Rises probably would be, I would say, would be the last my favorite Batman movie, last favorite Batman movie that came out to theater. So 2012, it's been a while. Um, I, the idea of what DC was trying to do or Warner brothers, DC comics was trying to do with their shared universe, like Marvel, um, you know, wonder woman, Aquaman, Shazam have all proved that you don't need a shared universe for these movies to work. So I think Warner brothers is finally at that point saying, Hey, you know, let's just, let Matt Reeves do his thing. Let's, you know, that's that's why we hired him. He has a vision that we're on board with. So let's see what happens. Um, apparently, he wants to make this more of a noir Batman movie. He wants to do this more of a like a more of a detective kind of thing. And I, you know, one would say that I don't remember the last time Batman was really being a detective, aside from maybe The Dark Knight and Batman v Superman. So. Um, well, Batman v Superman, he was definitely being a detective in that. I will say that. Um, but let's go back to some more information about uh, whatever this the next Batman movie is called. I hate it when they say the Batman because, let's face it, folks, they don't know what it's going to be called. So you can call it the Batman if you want. I'm just calling it Batman 2020. How about that? So um, there were some actors that did you know, um, test for this. There was a guy named Nicholas Holt. He was from the X-Men franchise. Um, him and Robert Pattinson were uh, the finalists for this movie. Then there go my dogs. Um, both actors screen tested for uh, Batman 2020 and Pattinson obviously won. Um, he's known for the Twilight movies. Um, um, let's see. Pattinson was also known. I'm going to my show notes here. Sorry. Um, he's known for movies like Cosmopolis, Queen of the Desert, The Lost City of Z, and Good Time. Um, the writer-director, uh, Matt Reeves, did confirm to The Hollywood Reporter that there will be multiple villains plucked from the Cape Crusaders rogues gallery. Um, it's been reported Penguin, Catwoman, and Riddler. Um, Matt Reeves indicates that the coming Batman movie will utilize an incredibly villain um heavy storyline in order to set up quickly Batman's corner of the DCU. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to skip past this. Bottom line is that we, we have, we have an actor cast as Batman. That's great. Now let's get the ball rolling here. I mean, like I said, it's the anniversary of Batman this year and there's no Batman movie. There's a Joker movie. I guess that's a good thing, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about the Joker movie. So for those of you that have no idea what's going on with the Joker movie, yes, the, I'm not joking. <laughs> there really is a movie called Joker that's coming out. It will be starring Joaquin Phoenix. And um, let me tell you, this movie, this trailer, like I said, you win me over on a trailer. And it, it, it's not hard to win me over on a trailer, by the way. You use, like, the right kind of clips. You just It, it was just something about this. I'm sure most people or um, average Joe has seen the Joker trailer. And, um, yeah, I was I was excited about the idea of Joaquin Phoenix, but I was never excited about the idea of a solo Joker movie or an origin movie because, like I, like I tell my friends all the time, there is a Joker sol there's a Joker origin movie. It's called Batman 1989. Jack Napier, remember, he kind of falls into the chemicals. Batman drops him in there by accident, and it shows his backstory. Well, to me, that's always been the Joker backstory movie. As a matter of fact, I always thought that Batman 89 should have been called Joker or Joker Begins. I think that would have made more sense because it's not just all about Batman, but Jack Nicholson is the t the leading role in that. That's He was the one that was the highest paid on that movie. But, you know, there's always inter different interpretations of characters. I always say that, too. Um you know, everybody always asks me, who's my favorite Batman? I say Keaton. But if we're talking Bruce Wayne, I'm going to say Christian Bale. If you're going to say who's my favorite Joker, well, I'm going to say Heath Ledger. And But I also have love for Jack Nicholson. Um, we won't talk about Jared Leto. Um, you know, but th there's all different. The same with James Bond. It's just there's all different interpretations of that. So 
I'm treating this Joker as a totally different interpretation. It's not connected whatsoever into any of the Batman movies we've ever seen before. It looks dark. It doesn't look like a high budget um, action packed movie with all all kinds of CGI and such. This looks like more of a character study, which I'm all about. And you know, I, there's it's, there's something about the Joker. And you know, we saw, last time we saw the Joker on a movie screen was with Suicide Squad, and I was really disappointed with that. And I'm gonna say, you know, but it, the idea of casting Jared Leto was a great idea, but it's just, however, he I think he took it too far. Um, you know how maybe it's how it was written, maybe it's how he his acting, his you know whatever, but it didn't work for me. Um, I'll always go back and watch J- the Batman 89 with Jack Nicholson and say, man, he's classic Joker. But then you go back and watch The Dark Knight and say, well, that's just that that guy is just that that's the Joker. That's everything you could picture the Joker being. You can go back and watch the Batman animated series. You can go back, watch the um, the killing joke. Watch. The, I mean, I'm not in I don't read the comic books so much, but um yeah, there's so many different interpretations of Joker. Mark Hamill does an amazing job with his Joker voice. It's just so chilling. Hello, bats. That's the best I could do there. But um, yeah, it's so I'm excited about this. We'll you know when we have more time in the next hopefully couple weeks, um, we'll talk more about the Joker movie. So let me know what you have to think about that. Um, there's also a Birds of Prey movie that's in the works. That comes out next year. Um, and like I said, we, we'll talk more about Arrow. Um, I know there's probably – there are fans of Arrow out there. I'm hoping I'm not the only one that's still the fan of Arrow. Um, if not, then, well, it, luckily the show is called The Night Cave, so I wouldn't have to call Batman versus James Bond versus Arrow versus Knight Rider. Like I said, um, Knight Rider, I will, I, I'm will. i pretty positive I will be talking about that um, within – adding that into the um the slate of shows and such so um stay tuned for that let's go over some anniversaries because time is running out on my little clock here and it's come it's coming time for me to get um do my baby duty um anyway so octopussy celebrating an anniversary on june 10th came out in 1983 um it's all in the wrist i'll leave it at that you Only Live Twice uh, celebrates an anniversary. Um, it came out on June 13th, 1967. Batman Begins came out on June 15th, 2005. Batman Forever came out on June 16th, 1995. Batman Returns came out on June 18th, 1992. Batman and Robin came out on June 20th, 1998. Batman 89 celebrated the anniversary, like I said, this past week. 30 years. Wow, I feel old. Um... It uh, came out in 1989. For Your Eyes Only celebrated an anniversary. As a matter of fact, it is today, June 26, 1981. Live and Let Die celebrates an anniversary on June 27th. It came out in 1973. And finally, celebrating an anniversary, June. Uh, I'm sorry, in June 29th, 1979, is Moonraker. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a long list, and I wish I had time to talk about all these movies, but, uh, I will say that what's on my schedule right now, now that I'm finally getting back into the groove of things, um, I do want to do a, a um, a record re- an all-out review episode, or just a, a look back at Batman 89 and Moonraker, and, um, hopefully as the year progresses, even though we're already halfway through the year, I'll be able to do some more anniversary episodes like I did in the past, so... Um, Without further ado, these have been a long time coming, and I wish I knew the date for this, but um, we're just going to go right into it. Listener questions. um, I asked a long time ago for everyone to um, ask me some questions. You know, if you want a question, if you have a question for the show, um, tweet me at The Night Cave. Um, The Night Cave is also found on Facebook, so you can find me on there. I'm still on Instagram. Really don't post on there anymore, but you can still send me a message on there, and I'll try to check it. So the first question comes from Chris Fala. Frala, excuse me. If you could George Lucas any James Bond movie, what would it be? I would either add a new score to Goldeneye or retcon out any Skyfall references from Spectre. Thoughts? I could not agree with you more on retconning Skyfall references from Spectre. As a matter of fact, in my mind, Chris, um, anytime I watch Spectre, I always kind of put put my hands to my ears anytime they mention Silva in there because in my mind, Silva was his own bad guy. He was not a part of Spectre, and he if he was 
if he was a part of Spectre, then that just makes him just another measly henchman, and that's a, that's not what he was. He was, I think, he was way better than anything Blofeld brought to the table in Spectre. Now, if we're talking about the GoldenEye score, Gold, uh, like I said, GoldenEye is one of my favorite James Bond movies. Having said that, though, the score is yes, I have the score on my phone, and yes, I occasionally listen to it. Um, I love the Tina Turner theme on there. Um, the tank chase um, theme in there, I think, is the best part of the score. And I'm looking it up real quick while I have a second. But um, as I'm looking it up, I will say that the soundtrack done by Eric Serra, and I don't know what other um, movies he scored before, but the tank chase around St. Petersburg is what it's called. And it's not found on the one that was for sale for GoldenEye. But if you um, internet got if if you're sa- inter- if you're tech savvy, then you know how to find these these uh scores and how to find these tracks but it's called a ple- i'm sorry it's called tank chase around st petersburg it is by john altman and i know that they brought in john altman to um specifically because they wanted more of a james bond kind of a orchestra kind of theme when he was doing that for throughout that tank chase and had he scored that whole film i think it would have been it, it would have worked perfectly and the tank chase score is one of the best scenes of the whole movie and, um, you know, had it kept up that whole theme, I think it would have worked out. It just Eric Serra's score just seems like it was kind of done last minute. I know there's some people out there that do like it. I don't hate it. I like some themes of it, but um, I would say that would definitely be one of the things I would George Lucas. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I would George Lucas off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. Uh I got nothing right now, but I, I agree with you on all of those, so very good question there. Um, this comes from longtime listener and supporter of the show, Gary Simpson. Um, I thought Shatterhand was a great title, but after seeing the social media reaction to it, I'm pleased that they're not going with it. What are your thoughts? Um, oh, and he said, hi, Brian. Good to see you back. What's your take on the director change and pushing back to the release date? Um, the director change I'm excited about. Um, Danny Boyle, I think it was more kind of that, e- even though he worked briefly with um daniel craig on the um the london 2012 um olympic opening games um where he was playing james bond and he was escorting the queen it's really cool look it up on youtube it's 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 really really cool it's james bond he goes to escort the queen to the games and then they act like they're they're doing it they are um in a helicopter traveling around the city going to the stadium and then they parachute out and then the dr new james bond theme pops out obviously it's not daniel craig or the queen but it's really really cool um yeah, so um, the the idea of the pushing back the release, that's something I didn't get a chance to talk about is the release date for this. It's going to be next early next year, and um, I, I it's kind of interesting to me that they're going to be having this movie – um instead of you know, the normal november opening it's going it's being shifted towards february or, or early spring so i'm like okay well this might be a good thing um i want them to be able to take their time with this incidents such as daniel craig getting injured on set um it happens it's happened to him before and you know what it obviously happened to him again so and if you know that's why you know they give plenty of time. Hopefully, they give plenty of time for a crew to film this movie and do it right. And um, you take the idea of Mission Impossible. Um, was it was it Rogue Nation? Rogue Nation or um, Fallout? Actually, yeah, Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, Tom Cruise was filming it, uh, filming a scene where he jumped from one building to another and hurt his knee, hurt his leg somehow. Anyway, um, but guess what? They got that movie completed. Even they worked around it, and I think that's exactly what they were going to do with Daniel Craig with his injury. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, the idea of the title Shatterhand um, that's more for the the James Bond novel enthusiast. Um, I'm open for any title right now. Shatterhand sounds like a pretty cool theme, but it's you know it's uh, the idea. And this is another idea. This is one of my my pet peeves here. You have to have a catchy title, and the title to a movie should always have no more than three words in its title. If it has any more than that, then it's just it's too hard to say. It's like, oh, I went to see The Dark Knight. I went to see Skyfall. I went to see Goldfinger. I went to see Golden Eye. I went to see Batman. Yeah, okay, there. But anyway, um, okay. This comes from Spectre High Command. Um, what, in your opinion, is the most realistic Bond film to date? Okay, good question. Most realistic Bond film to date? Uh, 
I would have said die another day, but I would say the first half of die another day anyway, minus the satellite with the laser coming down into the demilitarized zone. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll say Casino Royale. Um, I would say Casino Royale comes pretty close because of the terrorism. Um, they mentioned the 9-11 reference in there. You have terrorists that are trying – you have an organization, while we know that it's Quantum slash Spectre, um, they're trying to blow up an airplane at an airport. Um, and they're – I think that would probably be the closest thing. Um, but you know what? I, I wish that the, – the idea of a movie in general, whether it's Batman, Bond, what have you, I, I, I like the idea of, of it being realistic – but sometimes it hits too close to home. So I don't need everything taken out of the news. We go to the movies, or at least I go to the movies, because I want to tune out everything that's going on. That's why I watch James Bond movies like Live and Let Die or you know Moonraker even, just because you know I just I want to just escape from everything that's going on in the world. So you know sometimes it's not necessary that it, it's as realistically. But great question there. Um, this comes from Matthew J. Salloway, longtime listener and supporter of the show. Also, I started reading Man with the Golden Gun. Really good so far. Are you reading any Fleming Bond's works? Uh, no. I sadly am not right now. Um, I do have some James Bond comic books that I still need to catch up on. Um, actually, I have some. I have a whole lot of comic books I really need to catch up on. Uh, but bottom line is that um, yeah, I've I, the only real pawn book that i've ever read is probably the quantum of solace short stories um and i think that was more under the uh well it, it, it's it's ian fleming and i did i always start off my year usually trying to read casino royale but something comes up i usually end up falling asleep when i'm reading the book it's no insult but it's just usually 10 p.m and uh it's about my bedtime so yeah anyway great question so I, i'll put that on my new year's resolution list for next year matthew but thank you for the question so that wraps it up for this episode of the Night K. That's right. We finally did it. I did it. I finally delivered like I said I was going to. Now I just need a n nice good, good kick in the ass to make sure that I get out new material every single week. So I'm sure that there's uh, people out there that can do that or I'll just have to set a, a reminder on my trusty Q phone here. Um, please be sure to like the um, – or actually just – Share this audio with your friends. Um, it's on Spreaker. It's going back on iTunes. So make sure that when I tweet it out, um, it's usually not too long after I record it. So make sure that you share this show with your friends, your family, anybody that's a fan of James Bond and Batman. Let them know that I'm adding Arrow. Add, let them know I'm adding Knight Rider. If you have a topic or of a movie or a, a character of a movie that you think would actually be fitting for this, I'm all, I'm I'm willing to listen, and maybe I can add that to this. So. The biggest thing that I ask for you to do is share this with show with your friends. Make sure that you subscribe to the show. Follow me on Twitter at the Night Cave. Follow me uh, um, on Facebook at the Night Cave. You can find the show on Spreaker, like I said, iTunes, and on YouTube. Um, and like James Bond, I will return. That's right. Like I said, I will return. It's just like James Bond and Batman. See, I'm making my way out of you know the Bat Cave. I'm making my way out of Jamaica, and I'm finally going back to um, 007 reporting for duty. That's right. Right. So like James Bond, I will return. Until next time, I'm Brian Thomas. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.